so it's come and it's here <laughs> and a lot has happened in the last few days the final shape has been finalized and before i get into what that means and the specifics of the expansion this is your one and only spoiler warning so leave now if you don't want anything spoiled or you know you just don't care let's get into the details of this expansion i'll try to be somewhat factual with this even though this is going to be more of an opinionative thing it's uh, you know definitely biased because i've enjoyed destiny for so long and not only that i like it <laughs> like and I, I also think this is by far the best expansion we've ever had and i'm saying that before we get into the review but i'm going to tell you why i think that's the case okay so we're going to start with the pale heart which is the new destination for this expansion it's kind of an amalgamation of past destinations from the old tower to the cosmodrome parts of the edz in there as well and as you progress throughout the pale heart it's very much an paying homage to lord of the rings it's very much shire to tower vibe in a sense that you start out in this lush beautiful greenery and you end up in this kind of dystopian disturbing creepy environment and yeah they absolutely pulled this off and i have to say something that was really nice about neomuna and is continually nice in this expansion with the pale heart is that we have these mini social spaces that act as a kind of like a forward operating base in that destination not every destination has this in fact i think that neomuna and the pale heart are the only two that have a postmaster a vault and a vendor at one location which is so nice because you can go to your ghost and cash in some engrams and you know do quest stuff and then you can check your postmaster and then you can put stuff in the vault it's a nice quality of life thing that just makes your life so much easier if you're farming for stuff say your inventory overflows or you know you need to clean your postmaster out but you don't want to go all the way back to the tower to do it you can just fast travel back to the lost city and do that and listen the destination as a whole is amazing it is a completely solo destination unless you choose to either invite people into your instance join another person or lfg some people in my opinion this isn't really that difficult the overthrow uh activity that you do on the pale heart isn't difficult enough to warrant needing maybe more than just yourself but you know I, i've been so i'm someone who plays the game pretty often so that might not be the case for everyone but thankfully there is the in-game lfg which is one of the best things they've added so that you can use that if you are in fact having trouble with said activity to go beyond that there's so many secrets lore tidbits collectibles i won't try to spoil too much but this destination again is packed full of stuff to do you have the overthrow activity which doesn't feel too repetitive it seems to be fresh enough each different mini location on the map has its own different bosses that are actually designed pretty well and have pseudo raid mechanics in them which again just makes them a little bit challenging but honestly again not quite challenging enough because the ads are pretty easy to kill the health bars aren't insane and the mechanics aren't honestly that difficult again it's just a little wrench to throw into the activity to again make it feel like it's actually fun because if it was just shoot the guy he goes immune clear ads and then do more damage yeah that's kind of boring although i can imagine people will get bored of it eventually because most people play way too much of this game including myself and you know that's a whole different issue but yeah overall this destination it looks cool it feels amazing to play in 
and the solo activity stuff i think is a really awesome idea i i just think again it's nice to have that variety in the destination that it's a solo destination whereas most of the other destinations you can run into people randomly and you might not think that's a problem but yeah sharing ads even in a patrol zone can be an issue i've had someone yell at me in text chat for staying in their area they literally they, they told me to leave them alone like man I'm not trying to steal your ads, I'm just on patrol. Like, what's your problem? And that's why, again, that's just another reason why it's, it's cool. It's solo if you want, and if you don't feel like it, or you want to play with friends, you can. It's honestly a cool thing. Next is the story. And man, Lightfall, by comparison, is just sad. And we kind of know the details now. There was a lot of crunch going on with Lightfall. It was super rushed. And Final Shape, again, the devs were given extra time to, to really polish this DLC. And it shows. We get a lot of character development on Ikora, Zavala, and Cade. I'm going to start with Zavala because this man has gone through so much. Losing his lover and Safi, his wife, uh, of course his son Hakeem eventually he would lose Cade in Forsaken Amanda Holiday in Season of Defiance and in this expansion he loses his ghost now before he loses Tarj in this story you can really see that all this has built up to a point where he's lashing out at Ikora he's essentially going out on his own and taking this risk of talking to the witness and trying to find a way to destroy the witness by talking to the voices inside of it that don't agree with the majority of the witness essentially the small or silent somewhat silent majority within the witness that does not want anything to do with the final show. these voices are eventually the reason why we're able to defeat the witness right but it took Tarj sacrificing himself so that not only Zavala could live, but I also assume that in that encounter, the witness was maybe injured a little bit as well by the light that Tarj put off, and maybe that helped us in the end. I don't know. I'll we'll have to see if there's any lore stuff that comes out and maybe implicates that. But the way the dissenters were talking, they really seemed like they needed Tarj to go save Zavala so that he would die attempting to stop the witness from essentially bringing Zavala into the collective of those voices. But uh, of course, Tarj was there to stop the witness and give Zavala, or I'm sorry, rather Cade, Ikora, the Guardian, and Crow time to pull Zavala out of the witness's clutch and into safety. Of course, with Cade, oh my god, with Cade, we have this beautiful side quest. This is, well, actually, it's a continuation of the campaign with Wildcard and the, the quest for the exotic sniper Still Hunt, which is a fun sniper, by the way. But not only that, we get this side quest, which is essentially the passing of the torch from Cade to Crow as Hunter Vanguard, and we never really saw that, although. Technically, by the Hunter Dare rules, Aldrin was the next High or Hunter Vanguard. I almost said High Vanguard. The Hive don't have a Vanguard, although who knows? Times are changing. But yeah, uh, Crow is the new Hunter Vanguard now, and we got to see Cade pass the torch. And not only that, it's to me it felt like Cade's death, or at least his sacrifice, to allow our ghost to live on was certainly a more meaningful death than he had in forsaken because in forsaken he really just he died trying to stop the eight barons and aldrin from escaping but he didn't have to, to do that he could have just let them escape and then wrangled them up at a later point with us us of course being the guardian but instead he tried to solo Eight guys, eight barons, Aldrin, and a whole bunch of Scorn. And yeah, that was a horrible idea. Especially because the barons 
are way more intelligent than you would think. And yes, that is me hating on Fickrel. I absolutely hate that one strike. I forget what it's called. Don't ever add it back unless it's like reworked. But yeah, again, this full circle thing. Aldrin killed Cade. And now he's Crow. He's a different person despite having the memories of Aldrin. And he is, again, the next Hunter Vanguard. And it's just a nice tender moment. Cade's death has meaning. And it really gave Zavala and Ikora the closure they needed to kind of heal that wound. And it also allowed for, uh, you know, closure for the fans because Kate's death was abrupt. And hopefully Crow can kind of fill the void of Kate. I, I don't think he'll be able to replace him because he's just such a fun character. And yeah. Not to mention, you know, I did feel like this This is always something that, that I struggle with throughout Destiny campaigns, is our Guardian doesn't always talk that much, but it, it did seem that our Guardian did have a lot more lines in this expansion, which is fantastic, because it makes you feel like you're contributing something to the story, even though, you know, we're not speaking the lines ourselves, but again, it just feels like you're part of it. When you're just standing there, it feels like you're just a fly on the wall watching stuff happen. As opposed to, again, being more of a, a part of this story. And that's nice. You know, it's a nice little touch. And we have we have kind of seen the, the maturation of our relationship with the ghost and the traveler. And really the power creep overall combining darkness and light, which leads us perfectly into prismatic yeah the build crafting is almost endless there are certain abilities you know whether it be grenades aspects fragments or supers that do prevent you from putting together certain combinations but overall prismatic feels really really good again just finding the combinations and eventually we're gonna get these exotic class items that will allow us to pair two different exotic armor perks into one exotic into one build and yeah that's gonna be great personally i cannot wait for liar's handshake and synthoseps on a hunter like that's insane that's just i mean the build crafting is going to be taken to a whole other level and even at launch it feels really fun i haven't gotten every single aspect on my other characters yet because you'd have to, you have to do some of the adventures to get that stuff unlocked but i do have everything done on my hunter and yeah liar's handshake feels great there's some um, other stuff that feels really good on hunter warlock is fun and so on but overall if you enjoyed if you enjoy build crafting in general prismatic is is so fun it's great being able to use a, a darkness melee a light grenade all while having, you know, one of those two supers on, you know, whether it be like a Shadow Shot or Silence and Squall with whatever exotic you want. The variety and the endless combinations, again, is just exciting to think about. To put into practice, yeah, it is a little bit harder because some exotics don't really work. But again, the class item does have broader definitions on how they're going to activate through certain abilities so it will be easier to use prismatic when those come out and definitely a lot more powerful prismatic is definitely busted uh, and you know despite that the day one raid was insane it was awesome the only negative thing i have to say about the day one raid and you know this isn't me bashing any streamers because they have to do what they have to do to win the competition the end of the day, whoever gets that day one clear is immortalized in Destiny history. And especially for this, especially considering the you know the, the penultimate raid. This is the Destiny raid to end all raids. And it was exactly that. Only one team was able to clear it on day one, with contest being day two, two days now. If it wasn't for that, only six people would have the raid emblem. And essentially in the raid we weakened the witness to a point where all we had to do was one last mission a 12-man mission which just 
was great. You had everyone there from Keitel, Mithrax, to Scurvy was even there. Freaking Savathun was there. You had you had everyone there, just about. Uh, and it was just amazing to see everything come to fruition in that one mission and stop the witness. Now, there is more to come, obviously, when it comes to villains and whatnot. I have some theories as, you know, when we saw the witness die, we saw these little sparks of light come out of it. And if you stayed to watch the cutscene at the end, where it's just you sitting on the helm and looking at the pale heart of the Traveler, you'll notice that these specks that come out and are causing, you know, quakes on Nessus and presumably will have something to do with the episodic story. They look very similar to what came off of The Witness. So, yeah, we can assume that maybe there's one or two entities that were able to escape that battle. And they might cause some mischief. We saw three. I think the other two did get contained by the Vanguard or something, but the last one did make it into orbit around Nessus, so we'll have to wait and see what goes on with that. But that's pretty much it for the factual stuff. I, I think, you know, I tried not to be too biased. I've been playing this game for 10 years, I've played every major expansion, and without a doubt, this expansion clears every single one. Taken King, Forsaken, you know, Age of Triumphs, they were S tier. This is S plus tier. Witch Queen was 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 A tier. Lightfall was definitely like a C or C minus. You know, ranking is, is something that I'm I might do some point down the line, now that we have Final Shape in its most most of its entirety. Like we're basically 95% through the story. There's only like little odds and ends I'm sure they'll tie up, but I mean, this is it for the Light and Dark Saga, and whatever saga comes next will probably involve the Winnower, who, as we heard in the raid, the Witness was just a blade in the hand of the Winnower, which really makes you scratch your head and say, well, if the Witness is a blade in just one of them, what's going to happen next? Because... I'm scared a little bit because the witness almost got us. It was that close to just ending everything. And whatever comes next might succeed. But, I mean, as a whole, the universe, as far as the good guys go, and this, this alliance with the Cabal, House of Light, and some of the Lucent Hive, I mean, it's just forced to be reckoned with. And there are few entities that could give the Alliance a hard time. But you never know. You never know. Uh, anyways, that's basically it for me. If you have any questions about the expansion that maybe you want to ask down below, feel free to ask those. I'll do my best to answer them. Also, uh, there is one more thing. I think Destiny 3 is right around the corner. And there is a video that's scheduled to go up at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on Destiny the Game's YouTube page. And it's the road ahead or the journey ahead or something like that. And my guess is, it's a pretty safe guess, that Destiny 3 is going to get announced. Either that it's in work or maybe they have a loose release date like 2026 or something like that. Maybe later, maybe earlier. Because they did reportedly start development on Destiny 3 sometime around the release of The Witch Queen. So, uh, so in theory, it's been in development for around two or three years, give or take a few months or whatever. So yeah, that's exciting to look forward to. Anyways, leave a like if you liked the content. Again, comment down below your questions, concerns, or anything about the final shape, or your own thoughts, as long as they are respectable thoughts, and so on. Subscribe if you haven't already. It's free, it's easy, it helps me out a lot, and I would really appreciate it. 
And I may or may not kiss you on the lips if you're into that. Actually, probably not, because that's just fucking weird. Just know that you watching this video is enough for me, and I will see you in the next one.